WCA. Ocala. Six minutes after 10 o'clock, thank you for tuning in. One of the things that we have in common with our next guest is the fact that um, he's going to talk to us about the Paris Review, and the Paris Review is one of those publications that discovers new writing talents quite frequently. You you and I have actually done that on a smaller scale because quite often we will we have authors on the, on the show who are self-published, um, we we drew the line right there. We we didn't want somebody just with a manuscript. They <laughs> yes, <laughs> they had to have been published, and, and of course we have had to have uh, you know read it and reviewed it and thought to ourselves, you know, this is pretty good. This could possibly be something that uh, a major publisher would pick up on. Um, but it is an interesting world out there. The, the talent of of people who sit at a typewriter or at a word processor or a computer or whatever we call the things we type on nowadays. Um, and what comes from the heart of men and women and, and the different things that are interesting to them. And they tell stories sometimes that are fictional but with a point or fictional but with just the intent to entertain or maybe it's not even fictional, maybe it's political in nature. This book is called The Paris Review. Actually, it's called The Unprofessionals, but it's from The Paris Review. I'm reading the title as if it yes. is the title. But it is edited by Lauren Stein. He is on the phone. He has... Um, He's he's an editor at large at Forer, Strauss, and Giro. I'm going to probably mess the pronunciations up here. He contributes to the New York Review of Books. He's uh, contributed to Harper's, the London Review of Books. He is a busy guy. I won't read the whole thing here, but just trust me, there's a lot of credentials here. The Unprofessionals is the name of the book. It is from the Paris Review, and we're going to learn about that and the stories in the book from the people who are not not professional writers. Mm-hmm. Or maybe not yet. Maybe the yes. word yet needs to be inserted there. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Where are you? Yeah, call- I, I should say off the bat that I, I called the book The Unprofessionals, but these writers are, some of them are already pretty famous. They're all young writers. But I call them unprofessionals because it seems to me that at a moment when, when um, especially over the last 10 years, Young writers are taught to professionalize themselves and do a lot of self-marketing and to write as if they were marketers. These young writers were staking out a claim for, for writing for writing's sake, for literature. And is that a difference between what a writer would go through today than like 10 years ago or maybe longer than that? Yeah, I mean, I think the world, we all know how much the world has changed. We all spend a lot of time, in fact, as writers nowadays, I think that's fair to say, if you, if you have a Twitter feed or if you're, if you're on uh, Facebook or even Instagram, in some sense, you're a writer, and, and we're used to that. We spend a lot of time as a country on social media, and right. of course, for younger people, that, that number goes up. But, but for these writers, I would say that kind of that kind of writing isn't just different from what they do, but it's actually opposite to what they do. Uh, ben Le- uh, Ben uh, Lerner writes about uh, keeping your identity, speaking about uh, the father in his story. True, yes. That's a, that's, a, that's a story about a guy going to a sperm bank to, to figure out whether he can, whether he'll be physically able to impregnate his best friend who wants a kid and is on her own and has asked him to be the father of her, of her child. And it's a very funny story about the awkwardness of, of taking that test. I won't go into the details. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Uh, so w- why is it called the Paris Review? It's called the Paris Review. It, very good question. It's, it's the most famous and, and, and by far the most popular literary magazine in America it, it was started by a handful of American expatriates in Paris in 1953, and and within five or ten years, really, the main base of operations had shifted to New York, where it's been ever since. But it was always published in English, and and always mainly um, American writers. Though 
with some foreign writers, and, I, and, I, and I've translated some from the French, too. We, we, we do a fair amount of French stuff in translation, but it's all for Americans. Oh, is that right? Oh, interesting. Yeah. How, and how did you get involved with this? I mean, you, you have such a large resume of, of things yourself. How did you get involved with this particular project? Well, I, I've been a book editor most of my grown-up life, and, and I grew up reading the Paris Review. I, I got a subscription for Christmas when I was a kid. I asked for it, and it's always represented to me the, the most important of the little magazines. Um, so when the job came open, I'm the only the third editor in, in its 62-year history, so it's a job that doesn't come open very often, but... When it did, um, I, I put myself forward and, and haven't looked back. That was five years ago, and we really relaunched the magazine, and it's been... Oh, wow. It, it, I'm, I'm going to have to look into the magazine. This sounds like a magazine I would enjoy. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope so. Uh, the uh, the format of the stories are not all the same. You have some poetry. You have some written in prose form. You have uh, some uh, uh, poetry some contained fiction and some in... Some fiction nonfiction. Right. And then you have some poetry contained in the story, so the, mm -hmm. the layout is not the same for all of the authors. No. Part of what the magazine exists to do, I mean, a, a big part of our mission is to discover new writers. That's a huge part of our mission. It always has been. Philip Roth, David Foster Wallace, Adrienne Rich, um, Jack Kerouac. These are all writers who first got started in the Paris Review. But another part of what we are up to is trying to help shape in our small way uh, the way Americans read. And one thing that matters a lot to us is that readers pay the same kind of attention, and it doesn't have to be deep and focused attention, but that they read, that they feel comfortable reading fiction, nonfiction, and poetry all in the same hour of the day, the same commute or the same um, moment in bed or wherever it might be, rather than thinking that these are very discreet um, human activities they actually have a lot in common you know that, in fact that's exactly where I wanted to go in, with one of my questions and I'm going to compare it to the compilation CD of music uh, if it's not all the same genre usually somebody says oh gosh I'm not going to buy that that's a rock song or a, or a country song in, in the literary world is, is that not an issue and, and this is more of a marketing question do, do the people like the publishers do they say I don't know if we should mix poetry with, with fiction or, or poetry with, with uh, bio biographical stuff. They sure do. And in fact, we found, that we found the publisher, Penguin, who believed in this project. And we, we found a new publisher for, for, for this because th they saw it the way we do. And it's not a normal book. It's an odd book. But the Paris Review isn't like any magazine in America. So I think they thought that if... The, the Penguin thought that, that we were the ones to do this book, and it's really, the, the thing that everything in this book has in common is that it's all by young writers, people in their 20s, 30s, and very early 40s, but it's almost all stuff written by people in their 30s about the, the world that we find ourselves in. The, it's all by this wow. emerging generation. Well, you got, to me, it's the most exciting one we've I, had in a while. I hope, it we, I hope it's, uh, it doesn't say something bad about me, but I never heard of the Paris Review, and now I'm in love with it. So uh, <laughs> the, the book is doing... There's something good about you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> say something. Uh, Lauren, I know we've got to let you go right away because you've got another interview coming up. Uh, do you, Quickly, do you have a website for the book? Theparisreview.org. Okay, there you go. And, and this particular one is called The Unprofessionals. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the air with us. Thank you both. That was great. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, more clouds and sun, warm and humid with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm around into the evening hours, the high 81 to 85. Lingering clouds late tonight, those 66 to 70. Tomorrow, clouds and some sunshine. There may be a shower along the coast. The high